Hey folks, welcome to my basement. <clears throat> I have a temporary desk that I'm sitting at that I'm going to be using for some plastic model work. Uh, I love to do that kind of stuff. But what I'm working on is a gift, okay? It's going to be a Christmas gift, and you won't see this video until after, the, until after this individual receives her gift. So, what am I doing? I have a 118 scale P51 Mustang. I believe it's a D. And I've had this thing for a lot of years. But I have, you know, I'm very close friends with Dee Perini. And if you guys know who she is, you'll know that her father served in World War II flying one of these bad boys. Except his was from the 4th Fighter Group, 336th Fighter Squadron. I think I got that right. And his airplane had a red front end, had Jersey Bounce listed on here. The VF is correct, but this needs to be an H, so we'll do some conversion there uh, with a light blue tail. And then, of course, the numbers that go across here are 414277. So we're going to convert this airplane into that. All right, so it was still basically the silver color. It had kind of an olive drab top that went around the the canopy and then it had this sweeping red that went back in this direction with Jersey bounce written right underneath the, uh, the manifold here so I found some images and got them blown up to the right size of the aircraft and we won't put the three on there but you know I got to look at some more photographs of hers and it might be a couple of extra little things we're gonna do I may try to rig up the antenna on it. On this particular aircraft, the antenna went right through the, the, uh, the canopy in the center. It looks like it mounts to the back of the headrest and then into the radio equipment. So I'm assuming that as the canopy slides back, it slides like over that wire, right? The antenna wire. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'll try to document this, give you guys an idea of what I'm doing and we'll just go from there, okay? So we're gonna convert this aircraft. Stay tuned. Well, <clears throat> we're going to try to brush the color on here. Now, the tail of this thing looks like it's a sky blue in the image that I found online uh, for, this, for this aircraft. So, I already sanded everything, and uh, I may have to put a couple of coats on. But I want to see how this does with just a brush. And it's clearly going to need a couple of coats. because we have to cover up the yellow. And then I will come back later with the matching silver and take care of it. Masking tape, we don't need no stinking masking tape. All right, let that paint settle and, uh, and dry. Otherwise you'll have streaks. Okay, let's go uh, clean the brush and let's do some silver on the back of this tail here.
All right, let that dry. All right, tail still drying. <clears throat> you can see where we patched in the silver here and here. Uh, the masking uh, starts right from where the uh, from where the canopy is on up to this point. This is all going to be in an olive drab type color. I got to go research what it is real quick. The entire nose section is going to be red, and so we're going to see this wrap around silver and then come back down. Okay. <laughs> Just like that. So, as you can see, um, using a soft brush, okay, not something that's so stiff, you can get a pretty decent finish with just a brush. You just gotta be patient and allow the paint to dry and you know go over it with a second coat. Now we've got the uh, the canopy painted here. I'm just gonna peel the masking tape off. Let's see how good the stuff was. It sure wasn't it wasn't cheap, I can tell you that much. The Tamiya stuff. Nice clean lines. That's Captain uh, Don Perini. Ready for battle. I'm not going to peel this tape off until I get another coat on the top here. But it's kind of thin. Looking good though. As we continue work on this uh, this conversion, um, we're masking off <clears throat> all the surfaces so we can get the red in here. If you notice on the aircraft, there's a red pinstripe that goes along the olive drab around the cupola, or not the cupola, but the uh, canopy. So, you know, with my old crusty eyesight, I'm trying to identify that. And uh, we'll spray this, we'll get everything else masked off. But that little bit of reveal right there is going to be painted red. Now I've started working on different uh, size decal that I'm working on. Okay, and um, I think I got I got a good size here. All right, that's going to match as close as possible. And what we do is we print these out on regular copy paper first to test fit everything before we go and do a final print on the actual decal paper, which is this stuff. So I think we're almost finished with this 118th scale jersey bounce.
Uh, it's hard to see with the glare. You can see here where it's a little bit milky. That'll dry clear, but the color really pops against this uh, flat surface. So yeah, it looks cool. Now this one, the invasion stripes, I'm gonna spray. So I'll mask this off over, plus that little bit that I have there, and then I'll shoot this with a, uh, with a clear coat. And what I picked up was this varnish. So it's a non-yellowing, and you can use it over acrylic, and acrylic's what I'm using. So we'll do a very light mist on it, let it dry, and then we'll put another thicker coat on. So we're all going to get to see how well this works or doesn't work. Hello folks, well we've come to the end of this particular, um, I don't want to say build because the aircraft was really already built. Um, I've owned this airplane for a whole lot of years and that's back when 21st Century Toys was really pumping these things out and uh, the aircraft came completely different color. Uh, the wings snapped on, everything was kind of loose and floppy and whatever so we took care of some of that. Uh, by using some uh, some adhesives, to, you know, to hold the wings into position and uh, as close to the right angle as possible, and so they won't fall apart. We still have prop movement, which is good. But anyhow, so what we're looking at here is a 118 scale P51D, and it is set up to replicate Captain Don Perini's, uh, what I believe was his third and final P51. So when I found the image online that was colorized, um, that's what it stated. Now I did some research on this aircraft and there's only a few photographs out there on the Jersey Bounce, okay? A Jersey Bounce, um, uh, it went through a couple of, uh, couple of variants and uh, according to what I found online uh, with the fourth fighter group um, was that this would have been the last uh, P-51 that was assigned to him uh, before someone else took it over. So I'm running with that, okay? And if I'm wrong, then I can make some corrections. But obviously, this is for D. Perini. It's a surprise gift. I'm not going to ask you a bunch of questions about it because I don't want to give it away. So, yeah, I'm pretty pumped about it. But so what do we do to this thing? Some of the things that I did was we had to sand the blue color off the front end and sand and rough up the yellow tail that was on there and repaint it with blue and red and put a lusterless olive drab top which is kind of an anti-glare uh, coating that they did on this particular aircraft which did follow up with a red pinstripe that found its way all the way around the canopy. The canopy is movable. Um, so we got it pretty close to what the photos were showing and if you look closely at the black and white pictures that are out there, you can see the lines and the shade differences in the aircraft. So um, those were very helpful. The, the color palette that I got came from an artist's rendering of the aircraft. And so that's what I went with. Okay, we do have a 118 scale. A Captain Don Perini inside the cockpit. Okay, you can probably see him in there looking at you, getting ready to do his business. The decal that you see right here. That's a custom made decal that I did on a printer. So I found the correct, well, it's not the correct, it's very close uh, font that was on the aircraft. So the image of this airplane, of the actual aircraft, was kind of looking at it from this angle with about this much in view, okay? It wasn't much in view, it was in black and white. And so it was clear to me that the, that the Jersey bounce writing was very well freehanded and there wasn't a ton of consistency in uh, letter sizing and things like that. But I wanted a good clean appearance, so I found the font. We printed this out on a couple, a couple of different sizes on copy paper first to see how it would look and to size it up. And then once I got that figured out, I used a, uh, a, an inkjet um, paper which was made for decals 
ran the final print, and then we went ahead and coded it a couple of times, which I think I talked about in an earlier segment, and the decal transferred just perfectly. And uh, it sets in there and the crevice is real nice. I did put some decal setting solution on there as well. The other thing we did, we researched to make sure that we had the proper tail number. Okay, uh, I'm looking at the camera, but it's like 414277, I believe it is. Do I have that right? 414277, which is the tail numbers for Captain Don Perini. You'll also notice that I located an 8th Air Force pin. Okay, that I stuck with this photograph. Now the way I have it set up is the airplane can be moved in any direction that she wants and she can set her dad's picture up uh, right there. 336th uh, Fighter Squadron is uh, who he flew with. So, the original aircraft did have the VF on there, but it had a B. I changed the B to an H with a little bit of paint and we got that pretty close. So, the only thing I couldn't find was, did he have his name painted on the canopy? I could not locate any photos for that, so I just opted to leave that piece off. Now, on the photos, the very few photos that are out there of this actual aircraft that he flew on, there are some out there that show um, invasion stripes, okay? The black and white stripes that run underneath the star. Some of them went completely around, with the exception where the star is and everything. Uh, some had just from here, from the I call it from the waist, but from the waist down, with a single black stripe on the wings. Some of them had them completely wrapped with all three down here. But there was just so many inconsistent photos. Uh, when I found this particular rendering, I'm like, this looks good, it looks clean, and we're gonna go with that. But because he did participate um, uh, in the war, and had invasion stripes on his aircraft, I went ahead and painted them on the display base. So that's why they're there, okay? Like, what the heck, so that's what they're for. So these are the invasion stripes. Now some of the, uh, some of the stain bled through the white. I tried to seal it and then, and then paint it again and then clear coat it, it still bled through. But now that I'm looking at it, it does have an antique appearance and so I'm kind of, that's kind of cool. And uh, if you know Dee, she's, she, she likes vintage military stuff. And so this may just fit right in with what she has going on. You'll also notice the fighting eagle on here. Uh, I'm not going to lift this up because everything's going to fall down. Uh, I did hand paint this fighting eagle on there. And uh, went with multiple layers of color. And just tried some different techniques using the paint pen and stuff. And then clear coated just that. I only clear coated the invasion stripes and the eagle. And left this a flat tone. When you build models, there's something about having a combination of flats and semi-glosses and glosses combined uh, in the project, which helps to give it some level of realism. In addition to what we worked on is you'll notice that all the panel lines have been scribed and I used a fine tip marker. I forget the name of it, but I talked about it earlier. I hit all the panel lines. I did not do underneath the aircraft because you're not going to be looking at underneath the aircraft. So, those are all completed. All right, the prop moves. You know, if she chooses to hang this thing up from the ceiling, she can do that. The, the landing gear does collapse. And uh, that's it. So, D, you know, I'm looking forward to getting this delivered to you. It is Monday night. It's 8.05 p.m., and uh, I just wrapped this thing up, and we're going to go out to Dee's house tomorrow after work. So I should be in Gettysburg around 5 o'clock, and then I'm going to have to go in first and get creative and say, Look, you need to go hide in a freaking bathroom or something while I set this up. Because she doesn't even know what's coming, first of all. She has no idea that she's got this coming. And I'm hoping that when she sees it, that she absolutely loves it because I like it. <laughs> so it's all good. But you know what? Dee is an awesome person. She does a lot for people. And you guys need to know this. She is, she has a heart that is this freaking huge. And she bends over backwards for people all the time. And uh, I know that anybody that knows her that's watching this will agree with me. Um, she is a blessing to many people. 
and she's certainly been a blessing to me. And this is just my way of giving back to her something that's a little bit personal. And uh, so, Dee, I love you. I hope you love this aircraft. I'm looking forward to bringing it out to you. And um, I'm not posting this video until after you receive it. So you may or may not let me capture your reaction um, when you see this. But I'll ask you before I do the unveiling. We'll, we'll work that out, folks. Okay, we'll work it out. But anyhow, I hope you liked this. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned because we're working on a couple of submarines right now. And uh, we also have a, uh, you know, I've got a 172nd scale Gato class submarine that I'm working on that I started several years ago. I never finished. It's dusty. It needs to be cleaned and re-engaged. And I'm also working on a 1953 wooden Gato class sub for a friend of mine, for Pat McCarthy. And so we're going to, we got to work and get that thing done for him because that has also been started a couple of years ago, but got tied up in the whole move and everything else here. And uh, I've really been away from it all. So when I'm not working on the Jeep or the M37 or the 151, we're going to be turning wrenches on little machines. Yeah. So we are leaving. Uh, I've left Dee's place. We delivered the airplane today. And uh, I just decided to keep it private. If Dee wants to chime in uh, on the video or anything like that to discuss anything, uh, she's certainly uh, authorized to do that. <laughs> but what a great moment uh, to honor her dad and, uh, and to honor her for who she is. So, all right, that's it. Thanks for watching. You guys be safe out there. I hope you enjoyed the uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I love you guys.